How to create a warm bokeh light effect in DaVinci Resolve 18.1.4. Inside your project edit window, go to effects, underneath toolbox, select generators, scroll down to find noise gradient and drag one of these filters to your edit timeline. We will first have a go at creating the slow animated dark yellow shade effect that appears in the background behind the lights. With this new noise gradient edit selected, go to Inspector and underneath Video and Generator, scroll down the controls properties to find Seath. Increase this slightly to 0.025. Scroll up to select Gradient. Ensure that the left node on the horizontal gradient bar has the color of black. Select the right gradient node at position 1.0. Double click on the color box below this, which should appear as white by default and select a light yellow preset shade. The hexadecimal code for this will be hash FFFF7F. Click OK. Select Settings. Scroll down to find Composite and reduce the opacity to 25. Now to create the animated lights that will appear in front of the dark yellow background. Return to your Effects menu. Select the Effects sub-menu underneath Toolbox and go to drag a Fusion Composition Edit to the video track and directly above your previously inserted Noise Gradient Edit. Using the Selection Mode tool, which you can also do by pressing A, click and drag from the end of each edit to ensure that the duration for each of these clips matches and that they are parallel with one another. Right click on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Fusion window, Deselect the Media Out 1 node by clicking anywhere on the empty nodes grid and go to Insert a new ellipse shape using the options just above the nodes grid. Select either the left or right view options underneath your new ellipse node to see a preview of your new media file above the Fusion timeline. You could do this with each node as you work inside the Fusion window. To reduce the opacity of the lights, decrease level to 0.622. Deselect your ellipse node Go to select a background node, click on the grey box alongside ellipse 1, hold the mouse button down and drag your mouse cursor to the blue effects mask arrow which appears alongside background 1 to make a connection. With background 1 selected, go to inspector and underneath colour, change type from solid colour to gradient. Change gradient type from linear to radial. To ensure that the start of the gradient shape emits from the centre of the circle and doesn't stretch beyond the actual ellipse border itself, change Start X to 0.5 and set End X to 0.75. Select the node on the left side of the horizontal gradient bar, double click on the black box below and click to change this to white. Click OK. Reduce the alpha value to 0.7 so that the inner part of the circle contains more transparency. The right node should also be set to white with full alpha value of 1.0, keeping the border areas more opaque than the center. With background 1 still selected, hold in shift and press space. Use the search box at the bottom of the new select tool window to find grid warp. Select this and go to click on add. With grid warp selected and in preview, Click on the central bottom point of your ellipse shape, hold the mouse button down and drag upwards very slightly to make the bottom side less rounded. Repeat this process for the top left and right sides of your ellipse shape, creating an almost egg slash pentagon shape, which should be reflective of distorted light circles that you would normally associate with Bokeh effects. Deselect Grid Warp 1. Go to add a P emitter tool. We will use this node to make multiple ellipse shapes appear on your screen as part of the animation. With this new node selected, go to Inspector and underneath Controls, to reduce the number of ellipses that appear on screen, reduce number to 0.275. To add variation to the number of particles that appear at any instance, increment number variance slightly to 0.01. To have the particles last on screen longer, increment lifespan to 150. And to have some particles last on screen slightly longer than others, increment lifespan variance to 10. Change temporal distribution from all at same time to randomly distributed. 
to help reduce more any obvious patterns that occur in your animation effect. To enable us to apply the ellipse shape to our particle effects, select Style and change Style from Point to Bitmap. You should now see a yellow arrow alongside P Emitter 1. Connect Grid Warp to this, with P Emitter still selected, back in Inspector, select Color Controls, the main color should be set to white, select Color Variance to open up the RGB and Alpha color settings that will apply shade variation to each of the particles throughout the animation, bearing in mind that I want the main colors to be yellow and orange. For this particular example, I will change low in red variance to 0.025 and high to 1. For green, I will change low to minus 0.525 and I will increase high to minus 0.262. Reduce low for blue variance to minus 1 and change high to minus 0.75. Open up the size controls properties. Increase size to 0.23 so that the particles appear bigger on screen. And again, in order to ensure that there are minor changes in particle appearance, increment size variance to 0.025. Open up fade controls. To have the particles blend in and out, change in to 0.15 so that each of the circles spend the first 15% of their lifespan fading in. And change out to 0.85 so that each of the circles spend the final 50% of their lifespans fading out. Go to Region, change Region from Sphere to All. With P emitter still selected, hold in Shift and press Space and go to add a P Turbulence tool. With this new node selected, go to Inspector and change X, Y and Z strengths to 0.03 and to ensure that these particle effects are processed by DaVinci Resolve with P-Turbulence selected, go to add a P-Render node. With P-Render selected, hold in Shift and press Space and go to add a Soft Glow tool. With Soft Glow selected, go to Inspector and underneath Controls, change Gain to 1.4 so that the overall vibrancy of the light circle doesn't obscure the colour of it too much and to spread the glow out from the circle slightly more to emphasize the light effect, increment glow size from 10 to 25. With Soft Glow 1 still selected, hold in Shift and press Space, and go to add a Light Rays tool. With this new node selected, under Inspector and Controls, go to Appearance and change Ray Drop Off from Default Soft to Keep Shape of Source. Change Length to 0.04, to prevent the light rays themselves from spreading out too far from the circular light. Reduce soften to zero to prevent too much blur from being added from the light rays effect. And increment brightness slightly to 0.325. To lower the vibrancy and to bring out the transparency of your light circles more, change composite type from add to normal. With light rays still selected, hold in shift and press space. And go to add a flicker addition tool. Go to Inspector and Controls. In order to add a light flicker effect to our circular shapes, change Flicker Type from Flicker Gamma to Flicker Gain so that this animation applies to the brighter sections of your circles. To reduce the rate of the flicker variation, decrease range to 0.07. To randomize the appearance of the light flicker effect more, I will increment randomness scale to 0.5. To make pauses between flickers more common in the animation, I will increment pause length to 1. Pause interval determines the number of back-to-back -back frames that will play on screen without any flicker effect being added. I will increment this to 20, which should be just under a second of screen time. I will keep pause randomness at 0.2 and will increment random seed to 2 to add minor variation to the quality that we will see with a flicker effect on screen. Connect Flicker Edition to Media Out 1. Return to your Edits window. With the Upper Fusion Composition clip selected containing the circular lights, under Inspector and Video, scroll down to Composite and change Composite node from Normal to Add to make the dark yellow animated background appear behind the circular lights. 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.